Hello there, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in between. Tactical Bacon 00 here, taking a fast look at a game called Paranautical Activity. It's currently in beta, and it's available via Desura uh, for $5.99 or your regional equivalent. And it is also on the Steam Greenlight system. So if you want to take a look at that, go ahead and head over to Greenlight, search for Paranautical Activity, and vote for it if it seems interesting to you. Now this is my first time reviewing a game or taking a fast look at it, so please forgive me for any mistakes or anything that I missed. Uh, if you see anything that I missed, leave it in the comment section below. I am always, always looking for suggestions on how to improve. Now according to the description in Steam Greenlight, Paradoxical Activity combines the classic FPS gameplay of games like Doom and Quake with the randomness and difficulty of modern roguelikes like Binding of Isaac and Spelunky. Game runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And the Desura description is a little bit more confusing. Paranautical Activity is a crazy fast paced voxel roguelike FPS. Holy crap. Well, they are not lying. It is definitely crazy, definitely fast paced, definitely voxel, definitely roguelike, and definitely FPS. Alright, first things first, let's take a look at the options menu. Keep in mind that this game is in beta, so the options menu is a little bit limited. You are able to select screen resolution, whether it's in windowed or full screen mode, and graphic quality, which isn't very descriptive, but this game is programmed using the Unity engine, so it is very, very light on system resources. I was able to max it out with no problem whatsoever, and I was able to get about 300 frames a second while running it. Now onto the controls menu. The controls are fully rebindable and the joysticks are also supported. So if you got a 360 pad and you think that would be a smart thing to plug in while playing a very fast paced shooter, go right ahead and be my guest. I will not be doing that. Mouse and keyboard for me all the way. Now one thing that was a little bit confusing is why the mouse sensitivity was not in that launcher along with all the other options for controls. You have to pause the game in game and go to the options menu there to adjust your mouse sensitivity. Why? I don't know. It might have something to do with the Unity engine or how that works. I just honestly don't know. Something else that's missing from the options menu is an FOV slider. Now, uh, for adventure games or third-person shooters, that's not a big of a deal. But when you're going through a first-person shooter and there's no FOV slider that can seriously affect your enjoyment of the game. Uh, some people actually get nauseous if the FOV is too narrow or too wide. So that is something to keep in mind when deciding on whether or not this game is for you. Uh, one, one good note is that there is no mouse acceleration from what I can tell, so there is no need to turn that on or off. That's a very good thing. Um, Another thing that I noticed, there is no save system at all, whatsoever. So if you are interrupted at any point during the game, you either have to pause it or abandon all your progress so far. Now I'm going to raise the levels of the game volume for just a minute to give you a pretty good sample of what the game sounds like. Now as far as I can tell, there's only one or two songs in the soundtrack, and the sounds of the weapons are kind of lacking. They do their job, but they're not all that special. From what I can tell, and I've been doing a little bit of research on this throughout the forums and very far corners of the internet where this information is located, there is no plot or backstory for this game. You are just plopped in a building that randomly generates, and there's monsters there. I I cannot for the life of me find any kind of backstory or lore as to why you're shooting these demons and people that look like Kenny from South Park. Alright, on to the game itself. First, uh, the combat system. There's a pretty decent weapon variety for a game of this nature. 
Now once again, this game is currently in beta, so anything that I say might have changed since you have seen the video or since I have done the research for this video. Uh, from what I can tell, the, the weapons, there is a rifle, it is a semi-automatic rifle that does eh, decent damage. There's also a sort of chain gun that shoots large green plasma balls that are kind of small, but they're very, very slow traveling. There is also a shotgun, which as expected is slow firing, has decent spread and high damage up close. There is a crossbow, which is one shot and you have to charge it up before you are able to fire it. There's also a weapon that looks like a blue trident that you can pull back and then throw at most monsters for an insta-kill. And bosses, it, it, it does a lot of damage, but I don't know if it's one shot. I wasn't able to test that theory. All weapons have unlimited ammo and do not need to be reloaded. That is pretty good considering that this game is crazy and fast paced and that would just be another thing to keep track of. Now from as far as I was able to get I cannot see if there's any way to upgrade the weapons or enhance their abilities in any way. Um, as I said that this is in beta that could change at any time. Alright now on to the monsters. There are minions. Those are the guys that look like Kenny and shoot fireballs at you. There are moths, they look like moth, moths that would fly around your house, and they shoot white balls that home in on you. There are demons, they shoot at you non-stop and are a really, really big pain to avoid. And there might be a few other regular monster types, but they aren't coming to mind at the moment. Alright, on to the bosses. Boss number one, Skeleto, is apparently his name. He is a giant flying skeleton skull that shoots lasers and vomits out small spiders. Then we move on to Doby, Doby, I, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. Spelled D-O-B-E-E. -E. It's a big ass whale that coughs up blood as you attack it and it shoots out mods also. Then we move on to Iris. Iris is a big eyeball that shoots green plasma and splits into smaller eyeballs. And of course, as with any roguelike, there are various pickups that have different status effects on you. There's gum, powdered keg, spinach, spring, winged foot, kiss of death, lightning bolt. They all do various things that are unlisted until you pick them up and then it tells you what the effect is and some of them drop your speed and increase your health some of them do all kinds of different things it's really just a roguelike trope that you figure that out on your own and decide what's best for you at that time in combat now while I'm talking about the weapon systems um, the game doesn't have any kind of damage indicator so while you are running around being shot by Kenny and demons and all kinds of other people and you're taking damage, you have no idea where you're taking damage from. There's no indication. There's not really any sound that would indicate that you're taking damage. So you have no idea what's going on until suddenly, just like you saw in that last battle, you turn up dead suddenly. Now, the AI for the enemies seems to be rather weak. The enemies seem to be on a preset path and then just fire at you constantly until you either die or they die. Um, there's no difficulty slider to adjust the AI difficulty. And some of the AI doesn't really make sense. Sometimes the game spawns enemies in the middle of the room and they're trapped there and they can't do anything to you. Alright, now on to glitches. There are quite a few in the game, uh, primarily being where if you are in a doorway into a room that you have not completed yet, and you just barely step over the threshold but then you quickly step back, the door does not immediately close and you can be trapped outside. Uh, now combine this with certain throwable weapons such as the trident, and if you accidentally throw your trident into that room and the door closes behind you, 
you will be locked out of that room permanently with no way of retrieving your weapon. Another glitch that I did notice was at some points enemies do clip through walls and various uh, items in the landscape. This can also cause problems because you can't clip through those and you die rather quickly. There also does seem to be some sort of optimization that's missing from the level generation system. When you're on the main menu and you click play, it takes a good 10-15 to 15 seconds for it to generate a level for you to play on. Which, a, a game like this should not require that long to generate a level. And this right here is the demonstration of that glitch that I was talking about earlier with the door closing without you being in the room. Um, I don't know, that, that should probably be fixed pretty soon in the next few versions. Overall, I rather enjoyed the game. Um, it's pretty fun if you're looking for a fast-paced, voxel, roguelike, first-person shooter, and you just want to kill some people. This has been Tactical Bacon 0 taking a fast look at Paranautical Activity. I'll see you next time. Bacon, out!